Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer. You know, I recently lost a shoe. I've got some soul searching to do. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Penny Dreadfuls of Victorian London from Yochi Uniti. We'll get back to the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. In Penny Dreadfuls of Victorian London from Ghiacci Uniti, players engage in this story-driven game that is all about murder, mayhem, and wickedness in Victorian London. Now, the game is very interesting. In the rule book, it's saying like the best way to learn how to play it is simply by playing it. Essentially, what you do is you have an introductory scenario and then three other larger scenarios in the board. Well, what you do is you unwrap the scenario and then you follow the cards. Now, you've got the backs of the cards and you essentially do whatever the back of the card tells you. Then you flip it over and read the uh, front of the card. Now the card plays out a story, and you introduce different characters, and these are usually signified by a kind of a, a meeple uh, of sorts, a, a wooden token. Uh, you go ahead and you put that uh, token on the board where it says, and then you also place locations on the board. These can be indoor locations or outdoor locations. Uh, you're going to go ahead and place those there, and then there's also items. Now, the items are represented by shapes with uh, Greek symbols on them, and they represent different like I say, different specific items that you're going to be using over the course of the game. Now, typically, when one person starts reading the story, it may say a numbered card interjects. So you look through the deck, you find that numbered card, then you go ahead, you look at the back of that numbered card, see if there's any text on there, and then look at the front of it, and then read that, then return to the original card. So you're interjecting these different story points into this overall narrative. But also, too, at, toward the end of it, it may tell you where to put the card, maybe to trash it, maybe put it in the archives, maybe put it where it's associated with a specific character or not. And then critically, too, uh, whether or not to pass the turn. If you pass the turn, you say pass the turn and then a card number. So the next person is going to pick up that um, card and, and, and read through that as well. Now... You're, as you're going through this, you also have black cubes, and these black cubes are kind of a currency. And frequently, you will be required to vote on certain issues. So you go ahead and you put a cube in your right hand or your left hand, and then depending on uh, whether or not you, you're on the winning side, if you win, you're going to lose those cubes. And then also, too, occasionally you might encounter challenges, and these challenges come out, and there's different ranks, one, two, or three. You can challenge these cards and uh, challenge these tokens, rather, and you have to, again, spend so many tokens uh, in order to, to, to beat the challenge. But the game itself, as you're playing through it, as you're going around, you're reading these cards, you're passing back and forth, you're finding locations, you are engaging in these challenges. As all of these things are going on, the game itself is going to kind of tell you who wins or how it wins. And so it's not a game where you have the knowledge of how you beat the game or how you win the game or how you beat your opponents right off the bat, that gradually comes to you as you are playing the game. It's gradually revealed to you. So whoever manages to fulfill the specific narrative objective of that game wins. Penny Dreadfuls of Victorian London. So I've played this game a few times now with both Ray and Kim. And first of all, I'll tell you right off the bat, I'm not too keen on playing games where you don't know the specific win conditions right off the bat. I like to know what, I, what I'm going to be playing for. And I'm somebody who really likes the idea of my games are, are stories, and I like stories that games tell. But I like to know how you win, and I like to know how you get there, and, and I like to be able to figure out some kind of a strategy. But I was looking at this game, and I was thinking, well, this game looks like it's more of kind of a uh, Sherlock Holmes consulting detective kind of game. Certainly it's got the Victorian London theme. Um, and the story-driven theme. The artwork, of course, looks a lot like Letters from Whitechapel and uh, Whitehall Mystery, which, of course, I think are the same designers, I think. To me, I think this is a game that probably works better in theory than in execution, because uh, as you're playing the game, you know, okay, you're, you're kind of getting into the story, but it just, it feels too much like, yes, you can make those decisions, and yes, you can branch out, so there would be replayability here, but it, I can't help but feeling it, it really feels like one of these things where the game is playing you. Uh, again, this feels more, it feels more like an activity than a game. 
this is it feels like there's not a lot of meat here as far as a game goes it's just kind of a fun thing to do and to explore and there is some fun there it's it's a, they're fun stories and it's interesting kind of seeing the board evolve and what have you but fundamentally it is not a game it doesn't really feel like much of a game to me and it, with that in mind i was disappointed uh Again, this is another one I really wanted to like, but I just feel like it fell flat. Uh, if you like stories, if you like detective games, and you like stuff like that, I, I think maybe this would appeal to you, but at the same time, I think maybe there's there's better games out there. I think like Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective kind of does it better. Uh, I wanted to like this game a lot more than I did. Just didn't. So I'm going to say a recommendation for the discriminating gamer for Penny Dreadfuls of Victorian London is... Cannot recommend. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we take a look at military history, books on history, fun things like that. I even post some of my own lectures on that channel. It would mean a lot to me if you would uh, check that channel out and subscribe. And uh, also, please like this video on Board Game Geek. And also, too, ladies and gentlemen, if you really enjoy the content we bring to you here, I'd humbly ask you to click on the Super Thanks button and leave a tip. My landlady told me she was going to raise my rent this month. I told her thank you. I didn't know how I was going to raise it. Please somebody help me. I'm again.